Okay. I mentioned uh, that we're, we're studying the mindsets of the master. Okay. Last week, I said a mindset is a pattern of thought that leads to actions subconsciously. It is the habitual thought patterns of the heart that become expressions of who we are. I want you to think about something. Okay? I want to think I want you to think about your morning routine. When you get up in the morning, normally what do you do? And why do you do it like that? I get up every morning when I get up, I go and I turn off the alarm at my house. I, I go into the kitchen. I make my, my cup of coffee and I get ready to go and to study the word and spend time with the Lord. I do that every day. I don't even have to think about doing it. It just, I've done it so long that it's ingrained in my subconscious way of doing things, okay? You can identify things about your life that you actually do without thinking about it at all. The goal of every man should be Christ-likeness. The way that you become Christ-like is you renew your mind and your subconscious being to think and act like he does. Okay? I know you say, well, that's Jesus. Well, he's the one that challenged us to be like him. Okay? I want you guys to grasp that if your life is ever going to be what it can be, if you're going to ever reach your potential as men, you're going to have to change how you think. You're going to have to change what you think about and how you think about it. Okay? I'll give you an example. It was very easy in my life. I was a guy that was uh, very emotional and I wore, it was easy to provoke me to anger. I mean, I reacted to things. I was a person that believed in honor and don't mess with me and I'm a man and this and that. And that was ingrained in me. So whenever I got in a situation, what did I do subconsciously? I would react a certain way to a situation without even thinking about it because that's who I was at the time. When I am I started to think about what we're talking about tonight, I began to say, how can I change this behavior? How can I, as a man, okay, because I know what the word says. The word says to love your enemies. It says that that don't let the sun go down on your wrath. It says not to return evil for evil. The word says a lot of things. But I got to get this word and I got to I got to practically apply it to my life to where I can actually do the word in life situations so when somebody comes and offends me i don't get put in a fence where i can't touch the rest of the world because i'm i'm behind the fence because i'm offended i'm going to go to if you got your bibles we're going to look at a passage in John. This is the only passage I want you to think about tonight. Okay? Is I want to be mindful of the 202020.
There is a situation in John chapter 4 where Jesus met a Samaritan woman. His disciples have been dispatched into town and they went to get something to eat. Jesus approaches this woman who was a Samaritan, was not accepted in the Jewish culture because they were considered half-breeds. They had intermarried with the Assyrians during the captivity of the Northern Kingdom, and they were looked down upon in, in the culture of, of the, from the Southern Kingdom. Well, he engages this woman She's shocked that he, he, he talks to her. And I want to pick it up. Let's go to the verse 7. It says, A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will, will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up in the everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to drink. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. Is that you spoke truly? The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers of, will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, and for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman, yet no one said, what do you seek, or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to him, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Now, I want you to think about something, man. Okay. What would it look like in your life, in my life, if my food or if my substance was to do the will 
of the Father who sent me to be here. How would that correlate to life activity on a day-to-day -day basis? Jesus said that my mindset that I have is to do God's will, not my will. We're going to be challenged to Christ-likeness. We're going to be challenged to Christ-likeness by understanding that life is not about us. Your life, the reason why you have it, is to live for someone other than yourself. Now I know that that goes around, goes against all cultural trends and every medium that tries to make us the most important thing in our realm of existence. But the mindset that Jesus had was that the reason why he was in every situation was not for him, it was for somebody else. As I meditate on that, and I've been meditating on it for a while, I'm challenged as a man because I know, how do you balance natural responsibilities, spiritual responsibilities? What, um, uh, Chris, you're, you're a single father. There's a lot of things that are going on in people's life. How do you live for the purpose of God on the earth? It starts with doing what we're doing right now. We're thinking about it. You can never actively engage the will of the Father unless you contemplate what that looks like. are not designed to live for yourself. What's the number one industry in the world? Number one, there's not a close second. It's a, almost in everything we do. It's called entertainment. What does entertainment do? Entertainment frees us from ourselves because we don't want to deal with the reality of what's going on in everyday life. So we created mechanisms to allow us to escape the drudgery of living life and to take our minds off of it. Think about that, okay? You don't have to do that. You can know as a man, you can know your creator just like Jesus did. And you can be about living for his purposes on a day-to-day -day basis. And fulfillment, the fulfillment like nothing you've ever experienced becomes a, a normal part of life. Everybody's searching for something, but they search for it in the wrong places. Jesus told this woman, think about what he said. He said, he who drinks of my water will never thirst. Will you know how when you get, I mean, it's been hot 
in Ocala. I don't know where everybody else is, but it's hot here. And sometimes I'm out working in in the heat in the middle of the day, and my mouth gets so dry. Man, I get thirsty. Thirst reveals a need to drink. When you drink of him, he has living water that fulfills you and you don't get thirsty anymore. If you focus on your relationship with God and becoming who you created to be, what you're going to find is satisfaction. You're going to find peace. And all the things that you're going through right now, and I can assure you that everybody's going through some stuff. I'm going through some stuff. Okay? I guarantee you in the middle of those storms, you will be like the master who goes to sleep in the bow of the ship while the storms rage on the outside and you go to sleep. Because all the noise around you will not distract you because you drank of his purpose. So tonight we're talking about the mindset of Jesus and how to live in his purpose, in his, in his mindset of fulfilling the will of the Father. Okay? You can live your life like this. Believe me when I say, Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus. He said, be Ye imitators of God as dear children. Be imitators of God. You, as a man, can imitate your master and get his results in your life. I'm excited about this, this, this message because we're going to, I'm every week for a while now. Like for the next several weeks, I'm going to take one scripture and I'm, I want you guys just to chew on it. This week, I want you to chew on Jesus saying that my food is to do the will of my father and finish his work. That's what I want. Your scripture. For this week, John 4, 34. John 4, 34. John 4, 34. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. If you want to see an interest in correlation, you could go over to the sixth chapter where he says, I'm the bread of life. A couple chapters over, he talks about he's the bread of life and whoever eats of his, eats of his flesh and drinks of his blood. He's talking about satisfying the, the deepest desires of your heart. Being fulfilled. Okay? Everybody with me? Challenged? Did we at least challenge you tonight to think about something? Okay. Now that we've challenged, now we're going to grow but we want to talk about some practical ways 
that we can apply the word to our everyday life. How can we apply what we're what we're talking about to to our everyday life? 